And we come to you after a week of chaos and uncertainty, and we now uh, delve into complete uncertainty as far as Baylor and the future of the Big 12 Conference as a few days ago, it was announced that Texas and Oklahoma, or at least it was released, that Texas and Oklahoma would be uh, pursuing a, an opportunity in the SEC, and how this all came about is still being sorted through and discussed, and you can make your own conclusions on how this all came to be, but uh, after a little bit of back and forth with the Big 12 over the weekend, uh, Texas today, Oklahoma officially announcing their request or what have you, their desire to enter the SEC officially. There is a meeting that's been called for Thursday with the SEC presidents, at which time uh, we could hear further movement uh, and a vote on Oklahoma and Texas being entered into the SEC as official members. Now, with that comes a lot of questions. Uh, what happens to the Big 12? When do they actually join the SEC? Uh, what does you know a team like Baylor do, obviously, and all the other eight teams that are now stranded on this island by themselves? And there's just so many moving parts, so many different ways to look at this, and uh, so many different scenarios out there now in the future. But uh, Grayson, how you been this week, man? Uh, not much to to really think about. Not too much to to to, to rack your brain over, except for uh, everything, basically. Yeah, this has been an absolutely wild week i mean the end of the week last week obviously the rumor started floating uh around wednesday i believe sec media days and yeah texas and ou uh put their request in their formal request to the sec uh for admittance july 1st 2025 i think both you and I agree uh, that we, we probably think this move is going to happen before then, uh, but that is the date that they formally, uh, I guess, asked for. But this is just a wild story. And I think the biggest part of the story is how many people were completely in the dark about this move. I mean, you can start with the entire Big 12. You can start with Bob Bowlesby, and that's just crazy in of itself. But then you go to the SEC and you're like, a&M was completely left in the dark about this entire situation. Obviously, they would have voted no at the time. Uh, flip side, you know, fast forwarding to today, I do believe the vote on Thursday will be 14 to 0 in favor of adding Oklahoma and Texas. I just think the writing is on the wall. I don't see AM voting no, even though they for sure would like to do that. But I just think the complete lack of communication is just shocking to me. And it's just one of it's one of the biggest stories I think I've heard in the last ten years. I mean, and it could turn into one of the biggest stories of the decade, uh, depending on what happens after. Which I mean, the repercussions for this decision, I mean, it could completely change college football forever. I mean, what happens next? Super conferences. I, I just think that this is going to change college football uh, for good. And we've already had so many changes: transfer portal, NIL, and this is just another one. Yeah, I mean, uh, but the changing of college football goes back far beyond the last 10 years. You know, everybody wants to act like, oh, it's just so crazy. It's so crazy. And, like, you're right. There, it's crazy, and there's more moving parts than ever. But, like, realignment, that's nothing new. That's absolutely nothing new. Now, realignment on this scale of two teams of this size moving to a conference like the SEC, that is different. But, I mean, how many different conferences has Baylor been in? I mean, they've been in multiple. You know, everybody has pretty much been in multiple conferences. I mean, this will be the third conference for Texas and Oklahoma in the last 30 years. I mean, they've bounced around. So, you know, there, there's places where you stuck longer than others. But, I mean, let's face it, the Big 12 was a house of cards the entire time. And a big part of the reason why was Texas. And, you know, moves that they made early on. Nebraska got their feathers ruffled. Missouri was obviously unhappy. Colorado, a and I mean, four teams bolted that had brands attached to them for various reasons along the way. And they did nothing to add anybody outside of TCU and West Virginia. But each time they went to the table to maybe pursue further teams, I understand why they didn't because – you look, I, I, I don't get the appeal of Cincinnati. I don't see how they're really game changers or, you know, uh, some of the other teams, UCF or whatever. But now they may be the same teams you have to go back to and, and you know, beg a little bit to, to come and join the fray. I don't know. I don't know what the Big 12 is going to do, but what I do know is that they need to stick together and they need to make OU and Texas pay them this buyout money because it is in the range of, uh, based on reports, around $150 million. Now, you take into account there's only eight schools now. 
eight would be splitting that. Not 10, not 12. Eight schools would split that $150 million. So they would all make well over $10 million based on Oklahoma and Texas leaving. Now, that will not make up for Texas and Oklahoma leaving beyond, you know, like a few months because they brought in so much money. But that is a significant amount of money to just throw to the wayside because you're in a hurry to go join another conference. But there is a threat that there will be those who are in a hurry to go join another conference. For example, today the Pac-12 held uh, their media day opener and their brand new commissioner, uh, he came out and he was talking about realignment. He said the pack is uh, basically not going to stay pat, that they'll be open to looking around and they'll be open to expansion. He didn't mention anybody in particular. He was asked about Texas Tech specifically, and he didn't really say no to anything. He just kind of left it wide open, which is probably a smart move on his part because why say a firm no to anything right now? Uh, and they are in a position uh, as the Pac-12 to maybe uh, come out on the other side of this a lot stronger. Uh, Grayson, one of the things that's been talked about is a Big Ten Pac-12 alliance. We've heard about uh, the top six teams in the Pac-12 and their brands going and joining the Big Ten to make that a super conference. We've heard, I mean, every scenario under the sun. So uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. But, yeah, the, the latest step taken, Texas and Oklahoma have officially extended their, you know, their formal uh you know, uh, now it's not an invitation because they're the ones, but they've filed their formal request. Uh, there you go to to enter the SEC. So yeah, there will be a vote. I'm sure this week that, like you said, will probably be 14 to nothing. I know there was a lot of talk early on that A&M and maybe like Missouri and you know some of these schools would get together and and vote out Texas, but the money is just too large and it's very clear. It doesn't matter what any individual school in the SEC wants. It's what the commissioner wants and. A&M learned that fast in a hurry. They tried to stand up like they were the, the, you know, the big kid in class and object, and they got shot down in two seconds, and they've shut their mouth since. I mean, that's how the SEC operates, and that's something that I know a lot of people are like, well, Texas isn't going to be used to that. They only care about money, and they'll have security, and yeah, they might not have as much polar sway as they used to, but um, they'll be in a conference where they're a lot happier, I suppose, and uh, that'll be enough of a of a makeup to not have the same kind of pull they had in the Big 12. Yeah, so I, I do have a couple other notes to kind of talk about. So the first one is, man, the Big 12 should have taken Louisville back in 2013 and just ridden with 11 schools. Um, it happened before the Big 10 added Nebraska for a couple years in there where they had 11 schools in their conference. So I just think that would have been uh, a better solution because you'd be sitting here with nine teams, which still isn't ideal, but I do think Louisville is a better brand than some of the schools that they might have to go after uh, in order to keep the Big 12 alive. So that's kind of my first uh, thought on this as well. Uh, you mentioned uh, Texas and OU and the fact that you know A&M had zero say in the SEC. I'm very curious how that works out for Texas because over the years, they've not been okay with being uh, the school that just kind of keeps their mouth quiet or, or doesn't have a lot of pull in the conference. They clearly think that they should be the top dog, even though they're not winning like the top dog. So that, that's kind of an interesting dilemma that could cause problems in the SEC, even though I, I don't think the big fish in the SEC will really care what Texas has to say at the end of the day. Um, I do want to mention, I do think this impacts Oklahoma the most. And honestly, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me why Oklahoma wanted to do this outside of the money poll. But they've been dominant in the Big 12. This hasn't impacted them at all for making the college football playoff. They've been in it time and time again, one of the most successful you know, programs in the country in the Big 12. So for me, just thinking at it from an Oklahoma perspective, this move does not make a whole lot of sense for them. I think they're the biggest loser in all of this. I, I just don't frankly don't understand it. Your goal is to make the college football playoff every year, and they've pretty much been able to do that. So I think they've just made their path a whole lot more difficult uh, in the SEC, and they had an opportunity to be the big fish in the Big 12 by themselves without having to, to stand there with Texas as well, and you could still play them every year. So I, I just, it really weird that OU decided to do that. I know you want to go with your rival or your, I guess, I don't even know what they are considered anymore now that they decide to band together and go do this. Um, but yeah, just a weird situation. I think Oklahoma might be uh, the the school that kind of hurts the most from this. I would love to know who approached who. Did Oklahoma approach Texas about this or did Texas approach Oklahoma? 
Texas approached the SEC, so my guess is Texas approached Oklahoma. No, they didn't, Grayson. They didn't do anything out of the bounds right. of rule. They didn't. They didn't. No, start schools are allowed this. to do that. Schools are allowed to. Conferences. Oh, that's aren't. right. Yeah, so, yeah. Way. So Texas was allowed to do that's that. Right, yeah. But I think based on that information, they probably asked Oklahoma, and Oklahoma was like, "Ah, eh, you know what? We can make the money work. Let's do it." But I'm just kind of. I, I just don't understand the appeal for Oklahoma. You, you've the goal is to make the college football playoff, and I think Texas is complaining. Oh, we haven't been able to make it. Well, you haven't been good enough to make it, regardless if you're in the SEC or the Big Twelve. Whereas Oklahoma has had a ton of success. I, I just I don't understand. I think they've made their path a whole lot harder. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't I don't know what the deal is. Uh, I would love to hear more from Joe Castiglione, but I find it odd, too. I know that uh, I think it was like Stuart Mandel wrote an article about why it makes more sense for Oklahoma to stay in the Big 12 and be the lone wolf, be the top dog, and not be attached at the hip to Texas, and I agree with him. Um, you know, but I understand Oklahoma, the money factor – uh, is what drives all of this. It's the money and it's the security. You know, the Big 12 has been on thin ice for several years now. It's just, it's just been an out of whack conference. And and one thing I do know, if Bob Bowlesby is the com- if the Big 12 exists in two years and Bob Bowlesby is still commissioner, every athletic director should be fired, including Matt Rhodes, every single one of them. That guy does not deserve his job. The fact that he was so blindsided by this is inexcusable. I mean, bottom line, and we just talked to Bob Bowlesby about a week and a half ago, and I have nothing against the guy. I I have questioned some of his decisions along the way. I still think the whole TCU-Baylor thing was just such an early sign of of things to come, quite honestly. That was gutless, and he had no reason to worry about what TCU was going to think about that. It was as simple as, they beat you. Like, bottom line, you two played – this team beat you, you're in a tie, you play, they beat you, bottom line, boom, done. And he made it so much more complicated by riding the fence. And I will never quite forgive him for that because it did cost potentially Baylor a spot in the playoff. And maybe it wouldn't have mattered. Maybe Ohio State still gets in. And look, based on what we know about college athletics, Ohio State still would have gotten in. But at least you would have showed some backbone. That was the the coward move was to just say nothing. Greg Sankey wouldn't have said nothing. Greg Sankey would have said, hey, Auburn and Alabama played. Alabama beat them. Alabama's going to the playoff. That's my suggestion. That's what Greg Sankey would have done. But Bob Bowlesby's not Greg Sankey, obviously. And so here we are. And, yeah, I'm of the opinion, as much as, you know, Bowlesby might be good at this or that or whatever the athletic directors and presidents want to, you know, compliment him for, I'm sure he's a nice guy or whatever. But what's happening right now, inexcusable. Just bottom line. And, and so he's got to be out, Grayson. Like, if, obviously, there's even a commissioner spot to be had in the Big 12 in a year or two. Now, there will be in a year. It may be a year from now when it's all starting to, like, you know, it'll be less than a year because, obviously, we're on the verge of a season. But, I mean, who knows what the off season looks like and all that. Who knows what even this season looks like. But Bowlesby's got to go, in my opinion. I agree. He's got to go. I mean, in 2014 is just the first example of it because Mm -hmm. the simple fact of the matter is it doesn't even matter that it was Baylor. You have to stand up for your conference. And Baylor was your best option because they had the win against TCU. There was simply no way that you could justify TCU being ahead of Baylor. So you have to back your, your best option. And Baylor was the best option at that time, and he showed no spine and and showed no backbone to support his conference, which is just beyond shocking. And as time has progressed, it just seems like, I, I don't know, I just don't think he's the leader that this conference needs. In this situation specifically, for Texas to allegedly have been talking for months mm-hmm. to the SEC, you got to know something. You well, got to read the tea leaves some. I got I got a little update on that. As a matter of fact, we're talking about this and it's perfect timing. But but yeah, basically to set the table as of right now, we're recording this on a Tuesday uh, afternoon. And Texas has, along with Oklahoma, formally requested acceptance into the SEC. SEC's got a meeting on Thursday with the presidents where they would likely vote. So I mentioned that. That's kind of where we are. As far as the Big 12 goes, uh, the messaging, messaging I'm getting from Baylor, and I've got something from Bullsby I want to pass along here, is basically they're, they're, 
keeping their eyes open and they're keeping their mind open. But uh, based on what I can tell right now, the plan is to stick to the Big 12. And a big part of that is that buyout money that Oklahoma and, SC, uh, Oklahoma and Texas would owe uh, the Big 12's eight remaining schools. So as of now, the plan for Baylor is to, yes, head on a swivel, you know, look around, be, be mindful of everything. So the complete opposite of the last year, obviously, uh, for those eight schools, and just try to stick together. And, and I think that's the best plan as of right now is to just stick together. Yes, you look outside at opportunities, but the moment one person gets cold feet and moves on, Texas Tech to the Pac-12, for example, or Iowa State to this place. And, and that's when you start to get on real shaky ground because the, the last thing that Texas and Oklahoma, and really Texas because it does feel like they're driving this more, but I know Oklahoma's right there. But the last thing they want to do is pay that money. The last thing they want to do is pay that money. I already saw a report last night that Kevin Eltife, who runs like the Regents or whatever down at Texas, the whole UT system, uh, one Georgia site who's been kind of on top of this reported that he's already got the money gathered for the buyout, which is not surprising that you two would have that money. I don't know that Oklahoma is going to come up with $80 million just overnight like that. Yes, they will make it up in short order with the SEC, but that's still a big old check to write right now no matter who you are. $80 million, $75 million, whatever it's going to end up being. So uh, they want the Big 12 to get paranoid. They want the Big 12 to start going, oh, we better jump over here real quick. And they want it to get down to four or three teams. And they don't care what happens to these other eight schools. They do not care one iota about these other eight schools. So it doesn't bother them if they don't have to write that check and the other ones just go about their business. So that's what I think Oklahoma and Texas are hoping for. As somebody on the, the Big 12 side of the fence, as far as just this story goes, uh, I think the best thing is for these eight to stick together, get that fat check, and then do what you want to do after that. But you're playing at least this season in the Big 12 with those schools, so you're sticking together for the foreseeable future anyways. Now, here's the, the little piece I want to pass along from Bob Bowlesby. The Big 12 Conference has learned the University of Oklahoma and the University of Texas have submitted formal requests to the SEC to be considered for membership Beginning with the 25-26 athletic year, the events of recent days have verified the two schools have been contemplating and planning the transition for months, and this formal application is the culmination of these processes. We are unwavering in the belief the Big 12 provides an outstanding platform for its members, athletic and academic success. We will face the challenges head on, and we have confidence the Big 12 will continue to be a vibrant and successful entity in the near term and in the foreseeable future. So that is Commissioner Bob Bowlesby's latest, and he hasn't said anything, really, over the last two or three days while this has been bubbling. But basically, we know you've been cheating, lying, stealing in the background. and Maybe not cheating, lying, stealing, but you've been lying, or at least being shadowy, uh, for sure. We know that you were doing that now, which you had no clue of, which is the problem. Uh, but we're just going to move forward. So what do you think of uh, what Bob Bowlesby has to say? And he mentioned the 25-26, which, of course, is the is the big key in this whole thing as far as the money, the grant of rights, Texas and OU's exit, and all of that. Yeah, if they wait that long, then Texas and OU don't have to pay the buyout. But, gosh, that's awkward. They're not doing I, that. Yeah, I don't no. see that happening. And for this year, it's going to be terribly awkward. <laughs> like yeah. Every time these schools play each hey, other. And OU and Texas are both in Waco. So, yeah. if anything, like I was thinking, if anything, it's the last Big 12 season. I think we can all agree on that because I even feel like if they replace OU and Texas or whatever they end up doing, if it stays like the Big 12 schools pretty much, change the name. Change the name and just burn the brand down and start over because it's a it's a toxic brand at this point. I mean that's that's definitely a possibility. Yeah. Now as far as the eight go, I, it's just such a complicated situation. I do agree with you. Texas and OU want them to kind of fall apart. That, that's the obvious goal uh, for Texas and Oklahoma in this situation. But I think for the Big Twelve, yeah, you wanna you wanna stay together as long as you can. And you want to add the money that Texas and OU will give you because it could give you the option at possibly using some of that money to help get another team into the Big 12 or another couple teams in the Big 12. Um, I think the goal here, though, and I know a lot of people have talked about adding Cincinnati, adding Memphis, adding these schools. I truly think if the Big 12 wants to last, they have to find a way to poach from other Power 5 conferences. I, I just think at the end of the day, if you want to maintain a Power 5 that prestige, I think you have to go get power five schools. I don't think a Cincinnati or a Memphis is going to move the needle uh, for your conference and, and you're still going to be risking quite a bit. So 
I'm curious how that shakes out. And I'm also curious at, because of this. If Kansas gets offered Big Ten admins, let's They're just not, say though. that. Yeah. But, but let's just say they did. Yeah. They have to take it. I, I, I oh, no, really any school has that. to jump if, if they can. If Baylor and TCU got an ACC offer, they have to take it. And that's the unfortunate part is that if any one of these schools get an offer to join another conference that's Power Five, they're going to have to take it. So I, I'm just, I, I'm very leery about how this all shakes out. I know West Virginia and the ACC could be another natural fit as well. Um, there's just so many moving parts, and it's going to be hard for everyone to trust each other in the Big 12 at this moment. And I think that's what makes it difficult as well because you're always going to be kind of leery of every school now that Texas and Oklahoma just did this, and some school could be hanging you out to dry a little bit. And now I think this is really just a everyone for themselves type thing, and I don't know how that's going to shake out for all of these schools, honestly. Yeah, Chip Brown's reporting that uh, apparently – ESPN still has a large chunk of money that they owe Texas for rights or the Longhorn Network, and that would go towards the buyout, the 100. And I've seen like 150, 160. I've seen 175. I've seen 180. So I don't know exactly. I saw 200 even. You saw 200. Yeah. So I don't know what the damn buyout is, but it's around $150 million at, at, at average. So it, that's kind of where it is. So 10 plus million, like 15 million plus per school, uh, because there's only eight remaining schools. So the Big 12 was already 10. Now they're the Big 8, calling themselves the Big 12. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where leadership has taken this conference to being the Big 10 or 10 schools in the Big 12 to eight schools in the Big 12, where at one point they were 12 schools in the Big 12, managed to run off four, add two, and then run off two more. So what a, what a stellar history with this conference.